Welcome to Whoa, that old queen A candid and adult take on queer life quandaries at a certain age So please listen at your own discretion Presented by Bernie and Tommy, the views here are purely those of the content providers and in no way reflect those of any service you may hear this program on. Now, please at your ears be upstanding for the <coughs> Old Queen. So we're on episode six now. Winter is here. It's not no longer coming. Yeah. I mean, it seems so long ago that we were in our shorts and t-shirts. We're in our shorts and t-shirts. The doors open. Yeah. We could hear the seagulls, mm. but now we're firmly chunky jumpers mm. and fur-lined boots because winter is here. Anyway, we've got some we've got some interesting things for you today. We've we've got like a bit of an extended kinky blink. Mm. Because uh, we're going to do a whole list of fetish things for gay men. Lovely. We've got Schneck out of it. And we've got our Queens of Agony section. Um, so we've got a number of questions to answer on that. But uh, w- what I wanted to talk about is, and, and no reflection on our friendship, obviously. Mm. Uh, but it's friends with benefits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the benefit of our friendship is that we do this. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. I know, right? Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, kind of friends with sexual benefits. Mm. How do you feel about that? I'm very much up for that. With a friends with benefits thing, is it just about the benefits? Is it just about the sex? It's more so, yeah. yeah. But, but I like them as people. But I have to step it because I think I have a certain sensibility about the way that I think about things. And that's partly because I'm a performance artist Mm. I think that people have to get that Mm. and I think that a lot of the people that have been friends with benefits I think they they like that about me but they're not really fully understanding of what that of of how much it means to me I think and it's only really my friends that really understand that yeah so they never really know me right I think okay do you do you want them to know you no, I'm quite happy for people just to know part of me. <laughs> so, so friends with benefits is different from normal friends? I think so. For me, it is. How yeah. about you? Yeah, I think you draw a line somewhere. I never get that emotionally close to friends with benefits mm. as I would with a normal friend. Mm. Because it's it's more to do with the, the sex side. Mm. So, um, and, not, and very often when that happens, they're kind of just there for sex anyway. It's, it's just like someone you have sex with regularly, mm. um, but there's nothing more. And mm. they're quite happy with, yeah, maybe a little bit of chit chat and then going afterwards. Mm. You know. I mean, like the idea of like going out with a big group of friends and mm. then one of them being your friend with benefits doesn't really appeal to me because I would be like what's going to happen later yeah and I've been in that situation before um would and find it's that quite stressful yeah it is quite stressful it's quite awkward mm. because you end up not really having a good time mm. I mean when you go out with your normal friends you're just there to have a nice time with them mm. whereas if it's friends with benefits there's kind of almost like an ulterior motive there isn't there and I think you sometimes can't be yourself because you wouldn't want to turn them off in some way. Well, that's what I mean about not them not knowing my full self. So yeah. there's a sort of part of it that I don't really yeah. give to those people. Yeah. And then so being around like a large group of people that do know me, that do know the, all of me, mm. it would just feel out of kilter. But then maybe, like imagine someone arriving into your friendship circle that mm. then that, then that relationship did blossom into that. Yeah. I wouldn't be averse to that. Not averse to it, but I think it's to how you navigate it. Mm. I think if that happens to me or when it has happened to me, I've always wondered whether it was going to be something more than just a friend with benefit situation mm. because you end up sharing a lot more with that person. Mm. And then it's almost it's almost like you're having a demi-relationship with them mm. in a way. 
Is that a proper term? No, I just made it up on the, off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> like a demigod, you know, like Demi Moore. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, but I'm I'm not opposed to demi relationships either, as long as they're clearly defined and you know what the boundaries are with that. I mean, friends would benefit if it gets to that level. It's like having a polyamorous relationship with someone, isn't it? Yeah, it is really. I feel like the kind of situations that I've been involved in is quite unspoken about what is going on and I feel like the good thing about polyamory is it's like often very well discussed Mm. maybe you could say it might be too well discussed for certain people yeah but that has never been the situation that I've been in really it's much more just well it's just a bit more discreet really yeah it's more of a one-on-one thing Mm. not a group friends mm. type of thing mm. and yeah because quite often they just come round to your flat yeah do you think like a friends with benefits situation could develop into a relationship yeah I mean it, I don't see why not mm. um, because you probably start seeing new things about them like there's there's lots of people that don't reveal all of themselves mm to you and slowly they're like an onion you know they just you peel back more layers and there's more and more to them Mm. and suddenly you can find yourself feeling different things towards them yeah if you started having intimate relationships at the beginning then I guess that would just progress even further yeah again quite difficult to navigate though isn't it when you're changing I think you both need to be up for that change Maybe it just needs to happen over a very long period of time. Wow. But <laughs> most people get fed up with me after a while anyway. <laughs> so, you know, that long period of time doesn't seem to happen for anything. <laughs> Friends with benefits, relationships. Um, <laughs> friendships seem to stay most of the time. But, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, it's a, tr- it's a tricky thing to navigate. I think, I, I think lots of people find it a very appealing situation. Yeah, I mean, it's totally great, really. If you can, if you love your own company and you like doing things on your own and then you, you know, you want to have the benefits mm. and you're a social person, yeah, you don't need to feel validated by a relationship. Yeah. But you go, oh, there's Carl and Graham, just mm. made that couple up. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, you, and everything about it is about you being the two of you together and you start, yeah. I think if you're an independent person, then it's then it's quite a good way to go. Yeah, it's like having your cake and eating. Mm. Most people say, isn't mm. it? Although I don't, I, I mean, I don't necessarily prescribe to that. I don't think it's like having your cake and eating it. I think it's just a different type of relationship. It's a different kind of cake. It's a different kind of cake. Um, is it vegan cake? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I still, I'm still going to get you some vegan cake. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> I forgot that. I For you to enjoy. You that I wasn't keen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move on to uh, Kinky Blink. So the Advocate or Advocate website, which is an LGBTQ plus website. Yeah, I have seen it, but I'm not, it's not something that I go to regularly. Well, I came across it the other day when I was doing some research into... Uh, for Kinky Blink, mm. wondering what what subject we would cover next. Are you sure? And it wasn't just for your own purpose, personal use? It might have been for my own personal use as well, yeah. Um, and I came across uh, this article that they did. Uh, I'm not quite sure how long ago. But it's 36 fetishes every gay man should know. Mm. Now, I'm not suggesting that we cover all 36 in this episode. Do you know how many you did know? Well, I think I know most of them, but there are some unusual ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you know the difference between fetish and kink? No. Because they're kind of interchangeable, but um, <laughs> kinks are unconventional sexual interests, like bondage or paddling. I, I don't know what paddling is. We might have to use, look that up. Uh, I think it's like slapping with when a... You, when you spank someone yeah. with a paddle. Mm. So that's almost like the act. Mm. And fetishes are also called paraphilias. 
like paraphernalia, I imagine. I imagine they are objects, materials, features, or articles of clothing, like used jock straps, that people respond to sexually and that enhance or facilitate sexual arousal. Okay. So the kink is the act. Mm. The fetish is almost like a thing or an idea. But I would imagine. So are, it's, we're talking about linguistics, are we? Yeah, I mean, mm. uh, linguistically, it they are two different things. But mm. the, uh, in normal language, we interplay yeah. them both mm. all the time. All the time, pretty much. Um, so there, in this list, there are um, the usual things like leather, uh, rubber, rope. Mm. So the rope is when you're. I mean, that blurs the lines between kink and fetish, apparently, because you you tie someone up and have a sexual act with it. But also you could just be turned on by rope. Okay. Balloons. (laughs) Well, let's look (laughs) look down this list. I'm not sure that balloons are on it. But maybe there's 37. There's 37. Well, I mean, maybe this will crop up as we go through this. A lot of people go crazy for balloons. Yeah. Mm. In a sexual manner? Mm. Really? Mm. I've not heard of this. What oh, would you yeah. do with a balloon? Um, sort of bit just be in a room with them, I think. Rub up against them. Do you wow. remember that sort of... The balloon dance. The balloon dance. Oh, the balloon dance. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like three men who yeah. are naked yeah. and then they, they pop the balloons until they get down to the last. It's yes. almost like the full Monty. Yeah. But with balloons. I might do that at Don't Tell Your Mother on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> they said well, they wanted me to dance on stage. Uh, well, if 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 we had some rehearsal, I might do it with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's also used underwear. Yes, I've come across that before. Do you like used underwear? I'm not keen, no, but other people have requested. I guess there's kind of a... I guess if you liked the smell of a person, mm. then used underwear would be mm. would would have the pheromones of that person. Yeah, are you quite pheromony or not? Um, I th- I think I probably am um, to some people. Yeah, but I, my I, my I, are quite strong. I yeah. don't. Can you smell yourself? Yes, I can usually smell myself even after a shower. It's crazy. Even when you've walked out the room? <laughs> I, I often smell myself when I've walked out the room. <laughs> I, work, I worked a lot in um, fragrance and department stores. Mm. And I remember this woman saying, I really like to spray my perfume so much that when I've left the room, you can still smell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, I, I don't like an overpowering... Perfume. I mean, the, the next one is armpits, so we're, we're still oh, in that right. smell zone, yeah. aren't yeah. we, with the armpit. Skateboarders. Doing what? <laughs> Just skateboarders. <laughs> 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 but then I, I think you're getting into the realm of uniform. So if someone's dressed as a skateboarder and have a skateboard with them, mm. then you're in that uniform of, of skateboarders, aren't you? Yeah. Doesn't do anything for me. Uh, you, the next one is uniforms, obviously, which uh, we touched mm. upon that. Skinheads. I, I like a skinhead. Mm. How about you? Mm. I guess yeah. it depends who's attached yeah, depa- to Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, urine. Have you got any? <laughs> <laughs> My glass is empty. Oh, is it? Hang on. <laughs> I'll just uh, pull it out. Um. <laughs> no, I'm not into urine, uh, but plenty of people are. Yeah. But but I think this is this has a special name actually. It's also called urolagnia. Golden showers. Well, that's uh, I think that's a different thing. This is a fetish around urine itself, which for obvious reasons overlaps with the kink of water sports, oh. i.e., golden showers. Mm. A sexual activity in which people enjoy getting peed on, peeing on others, and or drinking urine. I mean, it's not my cup of tea. Cup of wee. <laughs> it's not my <laughs> cup of wee. <laughs> Food. Yes. And don't confuse this fetish with the consumption of aphrodisiacs like oysters and chocolate. Mm. I didn't know chocolate was an aphrodisiac. Mm-hmm. I love chocolate. I love oysters. Chocolate-covered oysters. <gasps> wow. 
That's my Christmas present sorted. Um, I like oysters and bacon. Oysters and bacon? I've never had that. I think it's called, like, devils on horseback. <laughs> no, is that just a sausage and a... No, that's pigs in blanket. Yeah, I think it's called devils in... Ho- devils in... on horseback. Yeah. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Satisfying food fetishes does not always mean eating it. Some people like mess, don't they? Like, they do, like, a messy thing. Mm. So they put down a bit of tarpaulin... Mm. And roll around with cake and cheesecake and stuff. And it's not about eating it, it's about... Sounds like performance art. <laughs> I think they have got funding for it. <laughs> but actually, they're, they're fulfilling a kink. A fetish, sorry. Um, let's, come, let's go down to some of these more outlandish ones. Guns. I don't get guns. Guns are not readily available over here, are they? So I've got one in the <laughs> And now I'm slightly aroused. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had a little fantasy about walking around with a little clutch handbag and one of those very delicate pistols. Like a tiny gun. Yeah, a yeah. tiny gun. Yeah. And then holding up a bank or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or just the local. Or, <laughs> or just someone who's pissed you off. Mm. <laughs> this one I'm interested in. Plushy toys and stuffed animals. It's got a picture of a, a very handsome guy... Dressed in a bear outfit. Oh, yeah. That's what I like the look of. Mm. So this is furry. It, this isn't furries, though. It's, oh. it's stuffed toys. Oh, OK. So you'll never look at your niece's collection of plushy animals the same way again. Some people get sexually aroused from plushy toys. I do remember sort of, there was a rumour going around school that someone had cut a little hole out of the teddy bear and had been making passionate love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, number 26. <laughs> Balloons. I told you. You were right. It's here. Uh, And the guy who's written this article said, I didn't believe this was a real fetish until I looked it up. Balloon fetishes, which are very real, seem to be related to the tension of them popping. uh, A tension that some consider very erotic. Mm. Like a a physical embodiment of an orgasm. It is, yeah, because it's almost like the (laughs) build-up. And then you pop. Beard and facial hair, that's obviously one mm. of my fetishes. Classrooms, I guess, you know, it's the whole naughty boy thing. I, uh, I, exam rooms. They scare me, they don't turn me on. Well, I, I, I just remember being so anxious during my GCSEs mm. and sitting in the exam room and having a huge erection. <laughs> During the during the whole exam. Which exam was it? Geography. I can't Ge- remember. <laughs> it wasn't like a hot topic. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did explore that later on mm. a couple of years ago when I was talking to a psychologist about it and they told me that it was quite normal to experience that level of stress and anxiety in that way an arousal yeah see I think we sit exams at the wrong time of life to be honest Mm. like your hormones are going all over the place Mm. you know you're getting erections left right and centre Mm. you can't think of anything else Mm. I mean did you pass that exam well we just did GCSE so it was quite hard to fail but I probably got a very low mark in the exam yeah you're probably better on coursework Mm. Mm. I like the way you said that. (laughs) You were probably better on coursework. (laughs) Well, some people are, aren't they? They're Mm. not very good in exams. Yeah. Especially if you've got a massive erection. (laughs) I mean, I would be terrible (laughs) at an exam with a massive erection. I'd probably just be going to the loo all the Mm. time and hoping someone else was there. Um, Anyway, a blood. Oh, I don't want to talk about that, really. No. Knives. Mm, Guns or knives doesn't do it for me. Clowns. Mm. I mean, this is all going down a certain horror route. Is that something to do with fetish? Because there's some fear base around it, and that's what makes it exciting. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's all connected, isn't it? So, Coco the Clown, Mm. you get aroused? No, I don't. I would rule it out, because I think I'd be so Mm. excited about how it's going to pan out. Yeah. That I would just... Roll with it. A lot of people find clowns very scary, don't mm. they? And yeah. actually, the, now, Halloween becomes quite connected with clowns. Ooh. A lot of people dress up as clowns. Mannequins. 
again, you, is, people are scared of mannequins, aren't they? So this is, mm. I think you're right. It's going down a horror story mm. route. We're going to cut. Some Love um, mannequin with um, that amazing actress, uh, Kim Cattrall. Yeah, who was Samantha in Sex mm. and the City? Yeah. Because I was just Love thinking her. about her when I was thinking about food because I remember her scene where she was eating sushi off a naked man. Yeah. My favourite, the last one, age. 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 Also called chronophilia. Mm. Maybe we'll rename uh, this podcast that. It, the fetishization of age is a hotly debated topic in gay culture. This fetish applies with someone older who fetishizes a specific age of someone younger and when someone younger does the same with a specific age of someone older. Uh, the fetish doesn't require a significant age difference, just the fact that someone's age itself is a turn on. I don't understand it because they're saying, so you've got, like, maybe say you've got 20, 25 year olds together, one of them's turned on by the fact that what, the other one's 25. Yeah, so maybe it's the, like people who fancy people the same age. I mean, I've always f- fancied people of different ages. So they could be older, the same age, or younger. Mm. Um, obviously, with the whole daddy thing these days, mm. I get a lot of younger guys after me because they like that little fetish I think yeah. of, of you know, sleeping with an older man yeah but uh, yeah we talked about the daddy thing before so yeah. we don't really need to go into that too much well I think that um, I think it's interesting I feel just a bit weird by it because do people call you daddy some people have said that yeah but I think that's that's almost like a generalised term that a younger guy will call an older guy mm. And I don't think it specifically pertains to whether you're a daddy or not. Mm. I don't mind being identified as a daddy, mm. but that's kind of who I am. I wouldn't call you a daddy. Mm. Um, more of a mummy. <laughs> well, yeah, as you admitted yourself, you're more femme, mm. aren't you? So it, it, I think if I was a younger guy, I probably wouldn't call you a daddy just because mm. you were older than me. Mm. And I think maybe that's, yeah, maybe gay guys need to know the difference in some yeah. respects. A do- what's a doyen? I quite like to be that. <laughs> Can I be that? I don't know. Should we ask Alexa? <laughs> Alexa, what is a doyen? The noun doyen is usually defined as the senior member, as an age, rank, or experience of a group, class, profession, etc. Yeah, that's who I want to be. That's perfect. <laughs> that's a perfect term for you. <laughs> And I'll be a daddy doyen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. on that note, we're going to have a little... sort of imagine the merchandise. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking of a whole new line of T-shirts. I was like thinking of doll- dolls. <laughs> and dolls. Oh, my God, we could put that on our little shop as well. I'd love little dolls of us. Like little, yeah. You could dress them up in different outfits and things like that. Winter yeah. and summer. Let's think about that. Hello, Mattel, if you're listening. <laughs> I'm sure they are. And I'm not talking Trixie Mattel here. I'm talking about the people that make the toys. Um, anyway, on that note, we are going to have a little break and we'll be back. I after. love a little break. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, we'll be back after this. So we're back, and um, I've got something special for you for snack out of it. And um, these are sea chips. I like the sound of them. Um, And they're beautifully packaged. They come in a very nice Mm. packing. Um, They were established in 2016. (laughs) Um, A long history. Um, they're lime and chilli flavour, mm-hmm. but you can get just uh, ready salted, I think. Or sea salted. And they're handcrafted salmon skin crisps. I like salmon skin when it's yeah. so crispy. A lot of people don't eat the skin of no. fish. I mean, I don't like it when it's... If it's crispy, then I like it. Well, the, well these are crispy. Yeah. Um, and they're high in omega-3... Um, they contribute to cleaner oceans, which is yeah. good. And um, they're 62% protein. 
Let's get them down. For the protein freaks. I'm slightly worried about the packet. I feel like that's going to be a packet that's quite hard to open. Well, let's see. Okay, you managed it. Yeah. yeah. This, oh, they it smell there. quite fishy. Um, so I imagine that they're, they're almost like the Ooh, f- yeah. a fish version of a pork scratcher, in a way. But they smell a bit like a go cat dried <laughs> dried snack. They do. I'm sure cats would like this, but whether they're good for cats, I don't know. Um, Ooh, I'm not sure actually. That is quite fishy. I don't know about I that. I think it's an acquired taste. Yeah. We've both got lime and chilli. Mm. I'm not getting much lime and chilli off this. Chilli I am. Oh yeah, mm. there's an aftertaste of mm. chilli. Um, so... We're proud to say that we are the UK's first purveyors of delicious handcrafted salmon skin crisps. Saving tons of highly nutritious skin from going to waste. Mm. They're packed with protein, many essential nutrients commonly found in fish, make sea chips a deliciously healthy alternative to the snacks found in the shops today. I bet they're really high in salt. Yeah. They contain powerful antioxidant ALA. And 10% of our profits go towards ocean charities. Now, while I condone that, I don't think they're they're my favourite snack out of it. Snack. I think they're too salty. Mm. Which is quite rare for me to say because I do love a salty snack. But then I think whenever you have kind of fish, it is a little bit salty anyway, Mm. isn't it? Maybe it would be nice on a... This is an example of how you might could use this. Mm. On top of a fish pie, as a sort of breadcrumb-style coating, that might work better. Or uh, maybe a garnish yeah. in a fishy-based salad mm. instead of croutons. Yeah. But they they are quite... They're very flavourful, mm. aren't they? I think they're best as a, as a side Yeah, they're thing. a bit, bit overpowering. But, you know, uh, our listeners might like it. Yeah. yeah. I think we obviously have delicate palates. Yeah, very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> How do you research your snacks? Um, the internet. Have you heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> I am aware of it. Uh, well, sometimes the internet and sometimes I just uh, come across them. Do you just the put, like, strange snacks... Occasionally, yeah. Mm. Weird and wonderful ones. Mm. But, you know, we don't have to just do weird and wonderful mm. ones in this section. We could do quite normal ones, yeah. too. You know, but maybe with a different edge. Yeah. Yeah, we could we could mix it up a bit. Uh, they don't have to be insects or mm. fish skins. <laughs> <laughs> but there were some quite outlandish port scratchings, so maybe I'll... Uh... I love port scratchings. Well, yeah. there you go. Maybe mm. that's, that's mm. definitely going to be an episode mm. of this. Anyway, that's... Uh, Snack out of it. Um, I have some questions Lovely. for us in My our favorite. Queens of Agony section. Right. So this one is uh, quite pertinent. Send it sent in by a listener. Dear old queens, I'm in my mid thirties and I'm worried about getting older. What's your experience of being older on the gay scene? And do you feel that younger gays don't want you around and you shouldn't be there? And that's from Rumpelstiltskin in Warsaw. Um, <laughs> well, I think this is one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast, isn't it? Yes, I think that they could learn a lot from listening to all of the episodes. Yeah, because it's uh, it's about a celebration of getting mm. older and being gay, mm. which traditionally wasn't um, wasn't seen as very attractive on or, the gay yeah, scene. Yeah, become invisible. Yeah, mm. whereas I think things have definitely changed recently, and I think he, if he's in his thirties, he's still yeah, he shouldn't even be 
thinking about that, but I think that there is a condition where you always think that you are yeah. getting too old because you remember yourself as younger as a younger person yeah but i think this the whole reason for doing this podcast is a celebration of being older mm. and actually that it's it's not something to be afraid of it's something to embrace mm. because let's face it we're all going to get older you know it's a it's a byproduct of being human mm. so uh, it's about celebrating that but also i don't think i've i mean maybe i don't uh, socialize in those spheres where younger gays do see me as someone who shouldn't be on the gay scene. I've always been. I've always felt very embraced by younger people yeah. on that scene, and felt sometimes, you know, paternal to them, and sometimes very much looked after by them. Yeah, just like regular friends that know each other. Really, I d- I don't really tend to think about the age thing very often to be honest Mm. when I'm out I just feel like everybody's there together having a nice time Mm. and that the age doesn't really matter Mm. I think age is something that you perceive yourself really rather Mm. than what others perceive Mm. Uh, and if someone has a problem with you then they probably have a problem with themselves it's more about them than it is about you Mm. true but yeah I I don't think you should be worried about getting older certainly if you're in your mid-30s I think the times they are changing uh, there's statistics now that in this country... So by the time I'm 60, there's going to be more people over 60 in this country mm. than there are under. Mm. So I think the whole of society's attitude towards older people needs to change. Mm. And it doesn't need to be as youth-centric as it has been in the past. And I think about that in terms of my work. Like, I think that... I could carry on working until I die. And Mm. I think that what I would bring to that work is is all those years. Yeah. And that's exciting to do because now now as a performer, I feel much more confident and I I can empathise more with stories and I can embody stories better. And there's a different... There's something unique that I can bring in a world where a lot of the other performers are much younger and also I remember when I was in my 20s I didn't really know who I was Mm. I felt better about myself since I was 40 Mm. than I did for the the beginning part of my life because I feel I know who I am Mm. and I'm more confident in who I am and maybe that's why um younger guys find older guys a bit more attractive Mm. because we do have more of a confidence in who and what we are Mm. and we're more accepting of who we are as well Mm. at a time when they perhaps don't have that same feeling i don't like what's happened to my knees in recent years (laughs) (laughs) don't you find your knees feel just my knees have been slightly problematic, but I uh, do. I have well. You should eat some more of these chips yeah. because of the omega three oils. Mm. I take a lot of. Uh, I do take a lot of supplements. But I feel like my knees. I haven't looked into it, but I feel like they've been damaged by the years. Yeah, but what do well, you think? joints tend to be damaged mm. in a way. But I think there are there are there are things which can help, like. Um, like various omega-3 oils mm. help with joints uh, and things like that. Well, I My see joints. all these younger people in the gym just doing this exercise where they jump up onto big boxes, oh. like soft boxes, but they jump up and down and jump up and down. And I love that kind of exercise because it really challenges everything. Yeah. Like it challenges your balance and it challenges your strength and yeah. stamina. I've tried it and I just can't do it. After. My knees are so uncomfortable afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, and I think well maybe I should face the fact that that's not the one for me. It's probably but that's what I've found the hardest. Yeah, is not being able to do that. I mean, less impact stuff. Yeah, I mean you can still exercise everything, but you can do it with less impact exercise. Like the Angela Lansbury exercise document <laughs> video where she's just wafting around, <laughs> I love like waving her hand. You can even do it in an armchair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, any any exercise I think is good, mm. um, like cycling, mm. uh, swimming, 
Swimming is very good. So there's, there's lots of stuff that you can still exercise mm. at. And also actually maybe doing those less impact sports mm. um, strengthen those joints anyway. Yeah. But I would say, yeah, I mean, the, the thing about getting older is stuff does decay, um, particularly your body. But uh, the more you can do to help that with having a healthy diet, maybe taking supplements, but exercising. I always think my knees are worse or my joints are worse if I don't exercise mm, that's than true. when I do. Yeah, so I your think, body aches more. Yeah, I think it's use it or lose it. Mm. And if you want some longevity, then use it. Mm. Um, anyway, but don't worry about getting older. It's fabulous. What you lose in some respects, you gain in others. That's true. That's yeah. definitely true. So uh, I've got another one here. Uh, Dear old queens, one of my best gay friends has recently got a dog. I love dogs and pets, but he now seems to be completely obsessed with it. He has all the accessories, outfits, toys, etc. And if I meet them for a coffee and the dog's there, his attention is completely on the dog and only seems to talk about the dog. Obviously, as a gay man, I like attention... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> don't we all <laughs> and now I'm not getting any from my friend because of his very cute animal puppy will it always be like this shall I have a word or will the novelty eventually wear off and that's from boned up in Pimlico oh. <laughs> I don't think the novelty will wear off that will continue mm. I think that that's what your friend has become oh. I empathise that that's happened to me um, has it yeah. Lots of people just get involved in their dogs and that's all that they want to talk about. I quite like dogs, but I don't like... I don't want them to be the main topic of conversation. Really. No. I think the novelty might wear off a bit. And maybe he just needs a little break from that friend. And then just meet up with them when they don't have the dog. <laughs> I mean, he could just get a dog himself. Well, uh, yes. And then he would just get completely obsessed with his dog and then they would have that time and they would just, like, talk about their dogs together. Yeah. And it wouldn't feel so one-sided, perhaps. Yeah, maybe get involved with the dog mm. if you don't want to get a dog mm. yourself. Maybe offer to take the dog for a walk. Yeah. And then you have more of a similar topic of interest. Would you like a dog? I love dogs. Would you I, want one? I grew up with dogs. Um, I think I would... Uh, but not yet. Mm. I went for a walk with a dog walker last week. Mm. There was 12 dogs in the back wow. of this van. And we went up to Lee Woods. But there was we, one yeah. that was a massive rock violer. And it sort of <coughs> fell in love with me. Aww. It was just staring at me the whole time. And it was the least one that I thought would like would. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny that, isn't it? Yeah. I, uh, so I went camping in the summer, uh, went to the beach and, um, I went for a swim and I was just coming, walking back on my own and this, uh, the straight couple had a little puppy, Yorkshire Terrier puppy off the lead Mm. and it just latched onto me and it wouldn't leave me alone. Mm. And it was so sweet Mm. and lovely and obviously like my aura Mm. or something, Mm. you know, and I, and I was slightly broken hearted when I had to. Um, give it back to them Aww. after they chased me down the M4. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I'm more of a cat person, though. Really, I'd I like a cat. I like cats and dogs, but I'm slightly allergic to cats. Mm. Um, I have I've had both. Um, yeah. Um, so, what's our advice to this person then? Either get one yourself. Yeah. Um, call off a bit with your friend and, and wait to see if it does um, mm. he, it does change you have a feeling that it might I would say that that's the way he's going to be forever now yeah um, yeah it's a difficult one really or maybe date a puppy yeah like not an animal puppy like a a, a human puppy yeah and or then just, you might have something to talk about or just organise meetings where there are no dogs allowed. Yeah. <laughs> like yes. going swimming, maybe. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, I've got another question for us. Dear old queens, 
You talk a lot about dating and relationships, but I still think one is fun. I'm currently in the market to upgrade my personal time, in inverted commas, and searching for some toys to enhance my experience. What do you recommend and where do I look for these toys? And that's from asking for a friend in Bolton. So (laughs) so he's talking about sex toys. Yes. Um, Do you have any sex toys? No. Do, Do you not? No. Wow. But someone was telling me about this and they said to me, and they, they kept saying, what I needed to do to make sure that I was ready and prepared for every eventuality mm. was start using a dildo more. Right. And, um, and then they said, if you, but the problem with dildos is they're so expensive. Um, you could just use an apple and wrap it in a condom. <laughs> and I was like, that's really weird, an apple, what? what? And he kept saying, an apple. And then after a while he went, sorry, I didn't mean an apple, I meant a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, an apple is quite... It would be quite weird, wouldn't it? Well, I think or... you're, you're into quite extreme yeah. things if you're going to put an apple inside you. Yeah. But I've heard of carrots before, yeah. and I've heard of people warming them up slightly in the microwave so their body temperature. Okay. So it feels. Thanks for the tip. Like <laughs> there is uh, there is a carrot in my fridge. <laughs> uh, and then we're getting into food fetish again. Mm. But yeah, dildos. I think you need to be quite careful with dildos because you need to have like a medical grade silicone or rubber, I think, because otherwise you can get quite toxic, cheap toys what if you were to wrap it in a condom i think it okay if you wrapped it in a condom it's probably safer isn't it mm. but there, yeah there's a lots of things on the market you can have a dildo or you can you could get uh like a, a prostrate pleaser uh, pleaser <laughs> 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 yes i mean get ones that vibrate or uh, you can get like bigger ones mm. metal ones or masturbators when they say they're trying to they're thinking about upgrading does that mean that they've already got the sort of budget end and they want to go... Well, I said, I'm in the market to upgrade my personal time, so maybe they're, they're fed up of doing it themselves and they want some extra yeah. to... Where would you go if you wanted to get sex toys? The, I mean, Ann Summers do, yeah. that, don't they? And they arrive in very discreet packaging. So I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of a dildo, I think if you're just starting out, then you probably don't want like a gargantuan one, do you? No. You probably want a starter one. You can get them where porn stars have like moulded their penises and or just daytime TV presenters. <laughs> Has Pip Schofield got a dildo? What? <laughs> I don't know what that'd be like. And, uh, <laughs> I didn't imagine it would it would be adequate. Uh, but, but, Probably, yeah. I mean, it depends. I guess porn stars, you've probably seen it, so you mm. might, you fancy You'd know them. the one you want. Yeah. You fancy them, you, you mm. got the cut of his jib, mm. and uh, but that's what you want to insert into your mm. body. Um, Whereas Pip Schofield... Pip Schofield is an unknown yeah. quantity. Who knows? As far as I can tell. <laughs> 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 but... Uh, oh, I we just recently got obsessed with Andy Peters... Andy Peters on now, Instagram. I've just like he. I just watch all everything that he puts up. Traditionally, was a children's TV presenter, mm, he's and now he's a producer, re- right? I don't think. He, yeah, probably a little bit of producer, but mostly he sort of works for Lorraine Kelly. I'd love to work for Lorraine yeah, Kelly. It'd be a lot of fun. I wonder what sex toys she has. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have a Pip Schofield uh, dildo? Do you think? I don't know what she'd do. Yeah, potentially. Who knows? She's looking looking really good, isn't she? Yeah, she looks amazing. Mm. I love her. I mean, she's like a national treasure. Mm. Maybe she should be one of our wish list interviewers. Oh, she interviewees. Yeah. Anyway, where are we going? Where should this guy get his sex oh, toys? Yeah. Should should he or what was the question? Like, it was where, like, where would? What we... do we recommend? Oh, right. It's, and where should he go and get them? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it depends if you're into anal or not. 
or whether you want something, you know. Is there a long letter? There's there's not a long letter. <laughs> there's there's like nipple clamps, nipple suckers, um, you know, masturbators, dildos, vibrators, it's all sorts. I mean, the world is your lobster. I've got a lobster Have that you? operates as a nipple clamp. <laughs> lobster nipple clamps. <laughs> Great. I, I love the sound of that. Mm. I guess... What might be quite good is if you actually went in to see what the sex toy was like. Mm. I mean, a lot of these people that work in those shops are actually... Nothing phases them. They're very Mm. pleasant, you know. They've seen it all before and they want to talk about their... Experience. Yeah. Yeah. So... I think think some people get quite nervous about going into a sex Mm. shop. Um, But maybe you shouldn't. And that's what they're there for. That's what you're there for. Mm. And go and ask some advice. Go and have a look at these toys and see which one's the best for you. That's the answer. Or if you want a more discreet option, buy online. But, you know, it's potluck, isn't it? You might not Mm. like it when it turns up. But if you're buying online, I would say play it safe. And then you can always go higher, bigger, better, whatever. Yeah, so if you're starting out, go small. Mm. Mm. And then look into... uh, Mm increasing the pleasure anyway um on that note i think that's the end of our show oh um so thank you for listening please like share Mm -hmm. subscribe and um yeah but keep your uh, questions coming and comments coming and uh, but thank you for listening we will see you next time on what that old queen say goodbye tommy goodbye tommy (laughs) goodbye You have been listening to What? That Old Queen? Presented by Tom Marshman and Bernie Hodges. The show was produced by Bernie Hodges in October 2019 for HodgePodge Casting. You can contact the Old Queens by email on hello at thatoldqueen.com or find us on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs>